وبشر الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات what do they get أن لهم جنات that they're going to have not one multiple gardens they're going to have multiple gardens one garden is enough he says multiple and when Allah says multiple we will we will see that every fruit of Jannah is never the same if Allah gave you a grape and you tasted it oh the next grape completely different oh Every fruit is entirely different every time you have it. Then if every fruit is entirely different, can you imagine the gardens? Because a fruit is the smallest part of what? A garden. Allah gives not one but multiple gardens. Each garden with its own design, with its own flowers, with its own valleys, with its own waterfalls, with its own wonders. And you've been to one, you're like, ah... It's kind of the same, you know, if you go to like, uh, if you go to a beach in California, then you go to a beach in like Malaysia, and you go to a beach in Hawaii, at the end of the day, 80% of it is in common. It's a beach. Water, sun, sand. There's a few extra rocks here and there. There's a breeze is kind of similar. Maybe the water is clear. But you know, pretty much it's the same thing. Pretty much. When you're in the middle of the forest, whether you're in the redwood forest or you're in some other, like when you're there, you're like, wow, trees. Sky, mountain, it's pretty beautiful. It's all, it reminds me of this other place. Isn't that what you do? It reminds me of this other place. But Allah Azza wa Jal gives gardens and each one of them, مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِيعَتْ وَمَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ No eye has ever seen. No ear has ever heard. When you walk in the woods, when you walk in the garden, you hear the birds chirp. You know, you hear the breeze. But the breeze of Jannah, you've never heard. The chirping of those birds, you've never heard. And those birds, we're going to eat those birds too. وَلَحْمِ طَيْرٍ مِمَّا يَشْتَهُونَ There's going to be some good bird in, in Jannah, you know, of what they desire. That's the part I'm looking forward to actually, the birds of Jannah. Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned it, the flesh of bird of what they passionately desire. And I certainly do. The, <laughs> the roasted, whatever that is, heavenly chicken, I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. Allahumma adkhilla fil Jannah. You know, he says, تَجْرِي مِن تَحْتِهَا الْهَنْهَارِ Underneath all of them, there are rivers flowing. What, me, what that means is, first of all, there's rivers underneath, meaning underground water, the, under every river. And others have interpreted to mean that these mountains, these, these heavens, these gardens are all on cliffs. And you're all the way on top of the cliff enjoying this garden, and actually when you go to the edge, it's a waterfall too. So you're actually on top of a waterfall. You know, and rivers are flowing from underneath you. Others have said perhaps it's like the castles of, you know, Castle Sulaiman alayhi salam, where the floor is water itself. You're walking on water. You know, and you look underneath you and it's just water. كُلَّمَا رُزِقُوا مِنْهَا مِنْ ثَمَرَةٍ رِزْقًا Every time they're provided from it of any fruit as provision. Now, رُزِقُوا suggests you don't even have to get up and get a fruit. You could, you know, the wata afnan, the trees of Jannah are huge. And you're like, all oh, this fruit up there, how do I, can we order a, Stick or something. No, no, no. You just chill, you relax, it is brought to you. It is brought to you. You're just sitting there, and you know, يَطُوفُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلْدَانٌ مُخَلَّدُونَ These young butlers, valet boys, that Allah created just as service, service gentlemen for Jannah, you know, they run around, would you like some more apple, sir? And you know, you just, and you have it, of any one of the, مِنْ ثَمَرَةٍ Of any fruit, رِزْقًا You know, in this world, you like some fruits, you're not so crazy about some fruits. Like me personally, not crazy about durian, you know, in, in Malaysia. If you haven't heard of it, good for you. Because once you open it, you know, it's, it's a chemical warfare. So, so you like some fruits, you don't like some fruits. And when sometimes the fruit will be presented to you. Maybe it's one of the fruits you weren't crazy about. Maybe somebody brings to you a coconut, and you're like, I'm not so crazy about coconut. So the first impression you get is, hey, this is what we used to have in dunya. This is what we used to be given, we used to be provided way back, way back in dunya. And maybe it's something you liked, and maybe it's something you didn't like. And you know, you're in Jannah, you're thinking everything's going to be good. You know, sometimes your friends want to make you taste something, and you're like, you know, it's going to be really good. And you're like, mm, I don't know if I, I don't want to. And like, come on, try, 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 it's really good, it's great, crab is great. Or when I was in Malaysia, they made me eat uh, uh, octopus. Bit of octopus. I was like, ah. no, no, try it. It tastes like chicken. I was like, uh, uh, okay, maybe octopus. <laughs> I took a picture and said to my kids, this is what I just ate. And I got like 8,000 lines of ew <laughs> back. <laughs> you know? 
But you know, in Jannah, you're being offered this fruit, and the thought might cross somebody's mind, I don't know, I didn't like this in dunya. Oh, this is like what we used to get back home. Hmm, I thought I would get something else. But Allah adds, وَأُتُوا بِهِ مُتَشَابِهًا They will be brought that fruit, and that is, looking similar to what they had before. In other words, it will be similar, but when they take a bite, the surprise will shock them. Like they, what? Let me have an, and then the next bite is even better, and the next bite is even better, and now here's the thing. Sometimes you're eating something that you love. Especially at iftar, right? You're eating something that you absolutely love. If you're a chocoholic, you've got the entire you like, bucket ready, and you're chowing it down. The problem is, once you have one, two, three, four, five, when you get to the tenth one, even you're like, mm, I think I'm done. And there's a stop. And you don't want to, even your favorite meal, you don't want to taste it anymore at a certain point. Even if you had your favorite meal two, three times, you're like, let's eat something else now. I'm a fanatic about chicken shawarmas, but I can only have so many at a time. And after a while, I'm like, let's get some beef or something. Let's do something else. In, in Jannah, you're eating the same fruit, but it's actually never the same. So you never get tired of eating it. It's so amazing. And then Allah adds, وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا أَزْوَاجٌ مُطَهَرَةٌ Thank God there are only five minutes left, so I don't have to explain this part. You know, <laughs> they're going to have purified, it's translated purified spouses. And of course, sisters have no questions about this ayah uh, at all. They're completely happy with this ayah, and it increases their iman, and it makes them look forward to going to Jannah. Uh, I'll say a few things about this word from a language point of view. The first thing I'll say, I'll, I'll only share with you what I'm convinced of. Uh, Allah Ta'ala A'lamu bis sawab In my own study of the Qur'an, whatever I found the most convincing, I like to share. And I don't consider myself a scholar of the Qur'an, I consider myself very much a student of the Qur'an. And I think I'll, I'll die in that state, being a student of the Qur'an, I urge you to do your own studies. But here are a few things I'd like to share with you. In the Qur'an itself, the word azwaj or zawj is used both for males and for females. The word zawj is used, for example, قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهُ uh, The woman came and complained about her zawj, which is her what? Husband. Okay. Then zawj is also used for the wife. أَصْلَحْنَا لَهُ زَوْجَهُ We fixed his zawj for him, his wife for him. So the word zawj in Arabic actually means counterpart. It's okay to translate spouse, but I like counterpart better. Actually, a perfectly matched counterpart is called a zawj. The sun and the moon are zawjain. The day and the night are zawjain. Okay? This, these are actually zawjain from Allah Azza wa Jal. Similarly, this world and this life and the next life are also zawjain. They complete each other. This life is a key to the next one. The next life is dependent on this one. They're, they're, they're related with each other. They're zawjain. There's actually a zawjiyah inside of the human being. The body and the, the ruh are zawjain. They're, they count, counterpart each other. They're, they work together. The male and the female are also Zawjain. And in the majority language of the Arabs of the ancient times, the husband was called Zawj and the wife was also called Zawj. She wasn't called Zawjah. The Tamar Buta was not added even for the wife. That's even true in the Quran. Okay? That was actually considered Lugha Nadira min Ahlin Najd, min Ba'di Ahlin Najd. Some people of Najd actually used to use the word Zawjah. Quran didn't use it. Quran used the word Zawj for both man and for woman. Then the next thing is the, pr the plural pronoun Hum. Home in Arabic is used, it's damir shamilun. It's, it's a comprehensive, inclusive pronoun that includes both men and women. So when Allah says, they will have purified spouses, then actually my first inclination is to believe in, in most of these passages that Allah is saying the men will have purified spouses and so will the women have purified spouses. I'm not talking about ta'addud or number. I'm talking about everybody will have a purified spouse, at the very least. They will have a purified spouse. The number is a separate issue. Because actually most of the time in the Qur'an, when Allah speaks about purified spouses, He doesn't say, He will have many spouses. He says, they will have spouses. So there's a plural on this side and a plural on that side. Like for example, if I say, these people have spouses. Which could very well mean each one of you has how many? One. I mean there are hadith traditions and other traditions that refer to multiple. That's a separate issue. That's a later issue. But the Qur'an at the very least confirms, everybody will have a wonderful Spouse, one wonderful spouse at the very least. And that is not denied of men or of women. That's not denied. 
And the nature, of the, the nature of a spousal relationship is the next part. What a man desires in a spousal relationship is different from what a woman desires. What a man wants his spousal relationship to look like for the rest of his life, or forever, is different than what a woman desires. Actually, in this world, whenever a man and a woman come together, at the end of the day, there are compromises. There's, there's some things you're not going to be happy about, some things you're going to have to learn to live with, right? That's going to have to be the case. And then there are some things your wife will have to tolerate and say, Ya Allah and Jannah, please, not, I had enough here. You know, I'm done with this part. I, I can't do this anymore. Because you, you keep leaving, you know, ladoos in the bathroom, like your clothes, and you, you keep doing whatever, you, whatever it is that you do that she puts up with. She says eventually, Ya Allah, just uh, anything but that, you know, in Jannah. And that, that may well be the case. But then, and, and inshallah, when the time comes, I'll talk to you more about the idea of azwaj and jannah. Uh, but here I want to add mutahara, purified. Not pure. Pure is an incorrect translation. This is an ism of rule. Thoroughly purified. Meaning purified to you, not just spiritually and in terms of goodness, but purified exactly to your taste. You know, when people get married, before they get married, the, the girl the guy is interested in, she's perfect in every way. Man, when I look at her, I wonder what Allah has left in Jannah, because it's all here in this picture on Facebook. <laughs> you know, like, he's like, yeah. So, but when he gets married, then emails start coming to Ustad Milman, and you know, like, I thought she was perfect, but astaghfirullah, da, 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 you know, then it starts, right? In Jannah, it's not just a picture that's perfect, well photoshopped, you know? <laughs> It's actually the personality, the company. You know, sometimes the wife tests the husband and says, don't you like hanging out with me? And he bites his tongue and says, yes. <laughs> you know, of course I do. I hate going out with my friends. <laughs> I, you know. So the idea of mutahara means she's exactly to your liking and he will be exactly to your liking. I know that sounds impossible in this world. But that's a gift of the Akhirah. Azwajul Mutahara. And by the way, just like the fruit, every time you taste it, what does it feel like? The first time you're eating it. I've never had it before. Actually, that's what the case is with the spouse in general. It never gets old. She's actually the first. Her, you're, we're going to be with this woman for eternity. You're going to be with that man for etern ever and ever and ever. That's a long time. It's kind of a scary prospect. For, seriously, forever? What does Allah Azza wa Jal do? In, in Surah Al Rahman, He describes Hurun Maqsuratun fi Qiyam. Not Hurun. Yaqsurna. Maqsura. Yaqsurna. Maqsura. Meaning they're constantly lowering their eyes. When a woman meets her husband for the first time and he closes the door behind him and she avoids making eye contact because she's shy. Those beautiful moments never come back, except in Jannah, it's every time. Every time with her is the first time. Subhanallah. That's mutahara. She's in pure, there's no old history, no scars that have contaminated the relationship. No memory from, remember yesterday what you said? There's none of that. It's all gone. It's mutahara. And then it's okay to understand, hum fiha khalid. And they're going to be in that forever. One last thing about this ayah, I know I've taken long, but I'll just say one more thing about this ayah that's commonly overlooked. But it's part of the language of the Qur'an. The word azwaj in the Qur'an doesn't just come for spouses. The word azwaj in the Qur'an actually comes for people you hang out with and get along with. وَكُنْتُمْ أَزْوَاجًا ثَلَاثًا وَلَا تَمُدَّنَّ عَيْنَيْكَ مَا مَتَّعْنَا بِهِ أَزْوَاجًا مِنْهُمْ Azwaj in those ayat does not mean spouses. Azwaj in those ayat means company you hang out with that you perfectly click with. You know, there are, there are friends that you get along with and you have a laugh with them like you never have with anybody else. And you haven't hung out with those friends in many, many years and years later you hang out with them and you turn 17 again. And you're like, whoa, man, these guys. There's something else, you know? There's something about those groups. Those groups are actually called what? Azwaj, because you complete each other in that sense. Allah is not just talking about a happy marriage in Jannah. Allah is actually saying, your hangouts, your chill sessions, your, your parties, your groups, your cliques, when you're going to go out on a trip, when you're going to do stuff in Jannah, you're going to have friends that you just love being around. They're your azwaj. 
and they've been purified just for you. Because a lot of times, when you have a group of friends get together and hang out and have a good time, then one of them is more offensive than the others, or one person becomes the object of ridicule, or one person hurts the other person's feelings. It's a great hangout, but there's some sour moments here and there, right? But in, in Jannah, Allah has purified the collection of people. He's purified them, subhanAllah. And that is one of the joys of heaven. One of the joys, Allah describes this in other places. They're going to be meeting each other, asking each other questions. Hey man, how's it going? You made it too? Oh wow, I didn't think you'd. Okay, okay, you're into that too. All right, that's cool. How's it been, man? Remember back in the day? And they're going to just chill together. There's literally parties. Because somebody might read Quran and wonder, if I have the perfect spouse, how am I getting time to hang out with my friends in Jannah? Maybe that's part of the perfection of your spouse.